Health. Looked at it and said, okay, we can get away with picking Enigma this game because they have Sand King. He's a hero that doesn't want to go into an aggressive try lane because he really needs the levels and farm. Mm -hmm. And he can get a lot of that from his own jungle. So they thought, okay, we'll get a little bit greedy as well and we'll get Enigma so we can jungle that up and not fall behind in support farm. And Enigma definitely farms the jungle a lot faster than Sand King. Sand King can't start until level 3, and Enigma does it at level 1. Yeah, and that's that's the benefit when you have two junglers going at it. I think that the Enigma is going to get involved very early on here. Whereas Hellraiser, is you have to farm that blank for Dubas, and it's going to take a period of time. And he is actually heading top, and they might even run an aggressive try land here with this Weaver, and just try to shut down the farm of Draw on the Wraith King. A, a tough hero to shut down, to be sure. This could be some early clashing early, like in this uh, you know brief early game here, and I think that's that may dictate where this game goes. If the Weaver can get farmed from this lane, that can be very important, but this this aggro try lane could also just go absolutely horribly for uh, Hellraisers in this top lane, so... Uh, there's... I mean, you three heroes can stay. As long as you know where the Enigma is, you can be very aggressive in that lane. They just have to make sure they keep tabs on the Enigma. Yeah. Enigma chose to make Eilons to scout with out of the Trant. Very smart decision. He is gonna have to use one of his clarities early, which he already did. That's fine. But the fact that yeah. he's getting information up in the top lane, I think, is more important you than anything need else. Three clarities to be able to farm up your soul ring anyway. Yes. So no, it's not a huge is. deal. He's sitting right now. Clarities, the smoke, as well as an observer ward. So he actually wants to get involved pretty early on here in terms of his ganking with the smoke to see. Before we go any further here, guys, it is game number two. Last game of the day. We'll have a day off tomorrow, I believe, unless things change. And then we'll be back on, uh, I think it's the 2nd of October. And that should be, uh, there's a series that I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe it's Snob versus Empire will be the next one that we see. Smoke is broken here already. He smoked up and he was looking to wrap on mid. He sees a couple of the wards being placed down. So the sentries are being used. They are warding this jungle. And that means that, uh, fucking that, he's going to head down to the bottom jungle and try to get some farm there, so... The supports just smoked up to follow him or go for a kill on mid. It looks like they are going to try to go for a kill on Funzy here, who had a fantastic start in the last game. We'll see if he can stay alive. He is pretty playing. He's playing pretty low here. He understands that they're missing. They're off the map right now. So he's just going to sit back. Whereas in the top lanes, you're all still just CSing right up against Art Style. But again, let's get in some introductions. Draw will be on the Wraith King. And we'll have the Scarif Mage played by Creo. But hold that thought. Dubas is looking for, uh, looks to be a Burrow Strike, but they can't get it in range. Nice concussive shot coming out from Creo there. For the rest of Denial, you've got in the mid lane, Funzy. Oh. The other nice thing that they did there was Droll went and tanked the Creep Wave to make sure that Creo didn't get body blocked. And that's the only way that he could have died there. Because Scarif yeah. has 325 moves to be. It's just the small plays, the little plays that are really impressive to me. And the fact that you caught that is, is also fantastic. So... Denial stay alive in this top lane. Meanwhile, like I said, mid lane is Funzy, QSDF. Bottom lane, it's going to be Mad of the Jungle playing the Enigma, farming up aggressively. And then, of course, Paris Sakshiga on the clock. We're almost in the CS right now. Um, now, this is a mid lane uh, Brewmaster with the top CS right now, or at least, you know, back and forth between the top CS. So, we'll have to th see how things go here in the mid lane for the Brew as uh, the Creeps the creep Swarm kit keeps getting up on him. So, we'll have to see. Clockwork chose to max Rocket this game. Uh, which I think is a little interesting. If you max battery assault and you're against Fury Amp, plus you have the support of an Enigma, you could get a lot of kills on this Fury on. But he chose to just go for max rocket this game, which rank 4 rockets early on are a huge nuisance to have to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And just across every lane as and well. Mad, Mad also rank 2 stun, he's going for a kill. Or yeah, they, they want to fight. They, they know that he's probably in this jungle here, but... You still have to be. You still have to try to go out and get CS for Dread, so. We'll see if he gets caught out here. Meanwhile, there is going to be some rotations of the jungle coming out from uh, Hellraisers, but first and foremost, Mad is looking for a kill here on Dread. He's sitting pretty far back. They're going to try to go now. Malphite is ready. It's going to connect. And they will try to get the battery assault going here. The cogs first, maybe. They will get the cogs up there as the battery assault. They've got Flare. This is going to be your first blood Dread going down. And Paris getting involved. Mad comes through with a well-timed gank, and they're getting more off this bottom lane than the top right now, obviously, coming out from uh, Denial. Obviously, Hellraisers are putting a lot of aggression on this top lane, but it looks like it doesn't matter, necessarily. That was really well played for Mad. If you want to do anything as Enigma in terms of aggression, you need rank 2 stun. 
Rank 1 stun is awful and does absolutely nothing. Uh, he recognized that they had a kill opportunity in Dread, went for Rank 2 stun and made the kill work. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of Enigmas pick up Midnight Pulse here. Do you well, pick up Midnight here, Pulse at 5, or...? Uh, right now he probably won't pick it up early at all. He'll just keep maxing Eidolons to farm faster. If you're farming in your own jungle and you can free farm it and have zero pressure applied to you, you get Midnight Pulse to accelerate your farm. Mm -hmm. He had pressure applied to him by the warding of Hellraiser, so he chose to go for stun and play more aggressive this game instead of just playing a farm only Enigma in the yes. early game to get to a really quick 6. I think that's important. The fact that Mad gets involved in that kill is huge. Meanwhile, mid lane Dread has to continue playing scared on bottom lane. Yeah, he's finally moving up now, but still, uh, Funzy in the mid lane looks like he was maybe getting ganked for a second there, but it looks like they've rotated around. They have no smoke on them. They might have used it to get there. I'm not sure. Yoki does pick up the double damage rune, so you've got to be careful here. But again, Funzy's getting some witchcraft stacks. He's getting, of course, obviously his boots going to come out soon. He has the Null Talisman, obviously, which is helpful for the right click, but Yoki's actually leading the way in terms of CS in this mid lane and in the game as well. And top lane, too. Art Style and the Weaver getting a lot of CS here, so maybe not the fastest start for Denial like they had the last game. Wraith Fire Blast, Concussive Shot, Ancient Seal not coming through. Still taking some damage. Burrow Strike coming in from Dubas. They had the Sentry War. They couldn't get the kill. Dubas with a greatly timed Sentry, or excuse me, Burrow Strike to come in and make sure that they cannot secure that kill. And Denial chose to get a little bit aggressive on top lane because they saw Venge bottom lane as he was attacking Eidolons and forcing Enigma out of that jungle. And then was like, okay, fine, I'll just get my boots and get back up the top lane and start farming my own jungle now that you've rotated around and you're under local because you're running around the entire map instead of doing stuff. That's the thing, man. The levels for the supports right now for Hellraisers are, are, are a bit of a problem. However, they're putting some pressure on Jeral right now. He can't get as much farm as he would like. And maybe you still go for a Midas at some point, but he's still pretty far behind. Yes, the Clockwork and yes, the Death Prophet are doing well, but when it comes to straight up CS and, and straight up farmers, you have a really farmed Brewmaster, or at least a decently farmed uh, Brewmaster in our right star. Uh, Immune is sitting in the trees, and Funzi just scouted up the hill to see if Immune was up there, but he didn't check the trees. Oh no. So now that he knows he's not up there, he might get a little bit more aggressive and yeah, die he is. for his split. They see Immune, he's looking for a match oh. missile, but I mean, he's just so slow, he doesn't have boots on a bench, he's not able to do anything. The match missile goes and it's back here for Funzi, so he just sits Plus, back and he's fine. Yuki was already backing up and looking to head over to bottom right. Oh, hook shot! Regen were picked up for Paris, but... I don't think I'll have to use Split here. He doesn't do enough damage, and... Well, TP coming in from Dread. Paris trying to juke, but there's the Sprout coming in. There's gonna be the Split as well. He's in trouble. They're gonna try to focus. Cyclone first. Paris is regening up as well. Cogs are gonna go. They're rotating back in. Mad. He doesn't have Black Hole, I don't believe. In fact, no. And meanwhile, they're still chasing after a lot of these heroes. Funzi as well. You can see up in the air. That'll be Mad. Yoki now caught up. There's going to be the Malphite coming through. Do they have the damage? Crimson is going to connect. They need a couple more right clicks. And the Flare Water 2 should do the job. He sticks up as well. He's staying alive. Crimson does not connect. And Yoki gets out somehow. Miraculously. Ooh, that was close. You know, there was a fight at the same time in the top lane that we both missed. Nice. But there's a lot of low HP heroes up here. Yeah, it looks like no it. No one died. Yeah, Weaver and Dubas both sitting very, very low in HP. Art Style does have his treads now. No regen other than his wand, however, so he might have to go back home at some point. Or fairy salve or something. And, uh, yeah, down here in the bottom lane, Sakshika, he does have his hookshot, but I think he needs help in order to get a kill. Maybe, I'm not sure. He can maybe get a solo kill on Dread at this He's point. He's got too low mana to go for a solo kill. Yeah, not quite there. Flares just to get some more creeps. And Plus, with only rank 3 battery assault and the trance being there, I don't think he would even try for it. It's too risky. If one TP comes in, they can turn around on him. That's true. So, we'll just stay alive for the time being. Sitting back at uh, his tier 1 tower. Tread's now done. Maybe another Null Talisman coming out for Dread in that bottom lane. Art style, again, still farming away. Jeral has gotten not much room to work with here. 15 last hits, and he's... Yeah, this isn't looking that great for the safe land farmer of denial at this point in time. Whereas Hellraisers, they're doing pretty well. I mean, this is a game where 
you've got art style. If he can get enough farm, he can start going to town. I mean, maybe not a Spectre necessarily in the late game, but he's still pretty solid. Yoki getting chased down. He doesn't have his split. TP coming through from Dread. They're going to try to turn this around. Ancient Seal. Matt has no black hole mana right now. He can always soul ring if necessary. And he might do so to get this kill. Matt can turn around. Soul ring and black hole. He's going to do it. There it goes. Sitting at just barely at HP. Wave of Terror actually kills him unbelievably. Hook shot into Yoki. The Ancient Seal. Not enough. Still doesn't have his split ready to go. They can't bring Yoki down. He's too tanky. Finally, the Crips one for the low ground will get it done, but Funzi will pay for his sins. Goes down, and a two for two trade. Oh man, that hole! I really wanted to see the black hole, but they were all rotating over. They knew that 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 hole was gonna go off. So, interesting choice. That was a bunch of much needed experience for the supports on Hellraisers. Still level four. Play though. Recap, they both got 500. They both got to level four off of that fight. Mm -hmm. One. And Dubas, before that fight, I want to say that he was level 3, he had 2 points in stun, he was committed to playing aggressively and not falling back on his ability to farm the jungle and stack. I like the fact that, that he's doing so. Initiation. He has reincarnation, mind you, but they just want to force it at the very least. And it will go down. Oh, he's got a split now as well, it does get up, now Jarrell in trouble. He does throw up the Wraithfire Blast, nicely juked by Dubas, magic missile as well, Jarrell is about to fall. Artstyle comes in just to get the last hit, kill secured. For the Weaver. Very nice. And our talent Weaver got an urn. Gives him some HP, yeah. and it's actually a pretty good item on Weaver. I mean, if you're ganking and you're getting kills, if you're playing aggressively, yeah. I think it's a smart choice here, getting involved early on in the game. It just Bunzi. shows that, like, his item and the skill build from Dubas maxing stun, not looking for him to jump to get his blank, they want to keep the pressure on. That much is obvious. Yeah, that's important. Hey, you can't let Funzi get these levels up, get towards that level 2 ultimate now, although it's going to happen eventually. Now Denial are starting to put some split pushing pressure on these tier 1 towers in the mid lane, but they're certainly not going to take it. It looks like uh, they'll be able to, uh, we'll see. Sicking a lot of harass here, and everyone's still staying in the jungle for Hellridge or so. Meanwhile, Malphite's on Dubas right now. He has no meta for a Burrow Strike. He does have Sandstorm. Oh, again, he jukes it. So difficult to deal with. I'm surprised that Drill isn't stop casting stuns to throw most of the animation out there and then stop it before mm -hmm. it actually goes off to waste the bur or the sandstorm. If he can juke or bait out the sandstorm they could have gotten that kill. Oh Jarel's in trouble again. Uh maybe not. Well he might fall here but there is help. Drill in fact will go down. Weaver does come through. They hook shot in on Dread as well. This might be a two for one exchange. So at the very least, they get a couple of good trades going the way of Hellraiser. So Yoki and the rest of Art Style and everybody else are going to back off. Funzi's going to get right clicked down. Drip Storm coming through. That'll connect on a couple of the heroes. Art Style just earns himself back up. He's fine. The cogs going through. That did nothing, really. They just didn't want to. Funzi. Yeah, that. said hi to him. Give him a hug. I was like, I don't know about that one, but. Well, that was a, a risky smoke coming out from Hellraisers. They're just going balls to the wall aggressive this game. Mm -hmm. Oh, mad. Look out, buddy. He's got his, uh, he's actually got his mech done. So if they want to try to fight here, they can. He got a follow up back in eight seconds. So. Uh, to make another note about, uh, item, or skill builds rather, Skywrath has three points in silence right now. He's level six. When you do this build on Skywrath, you do absolutely no damage other than your ultimate. That 5 second cooldown on Arcane Bolt, and it hits for... I think it just kind of tickles heroes at this point. Since he's a support, he's... Gotta get effective ults off in silences, or he's kind of worthless in team fights. Yeah. And Creo played the same hero in the last game, I believe. Yep. And he was pretty effective with it. His Mystic players weren't always on point, but... He had some good Ancient Seals to help out secure kills with Jarrah and the Clinks. So... He needs to hook up now that he's level 6 with Clockwork, which they're doing on bottom lane right now. Just follow him around and go for pickoffs. Even if the Venge swaps out their primary target, they're at least getting a kill. Trade getting caught out. Nice swap coming through. Immune's not even going to fall yet. Mystic Flare did some work there. Meanwhile, there's the Exorcism going to split, but that's into a level 2 ult. But there's the Black Hole on all of the Pandas. Can they kill all of them? Silence up on the Wind Panda. The Earth is still alive. The last one to do so. I don't think they can bring him down by the time he's about to respawn, but they cog him! Maybe they can. He's about to respawn. And Yoki, he will go back to his main form. It looks like... Funzi getting chased down, doing a lot of damage to Arsile, will get the kill, gets a double kill in the end, now they're chasing after Yoki, Denial having a fantastic fight, 
There's gonna be the cogs again. Wraith Fire Blast. Yoki's about to fall. Big fight for Denial. That'll get them back right into the game, and they're doing some work now. And they're gonna try to take the tier one tower off the back end of it. Art style picked up a double damage. My bot rune came into the fight and just got silent because these sentry wards over here. They saw him run up the hill and. Are First he gets hit by Funzy Sounds, then he gets hit by the Sounds of Skywrath. They do lose the Death Prophet, but they also kill off That's fallen. a huge fight. Yeah, not, not only our style, but just all, I think it was four yeah, heroes at the end? Uh, Maybe everybody? He died and then revived and TP'd back in. So yeah, everybody really going down there. Yes. Huge fight for Denial. That gets them down to a 3,000 net worth lead. It's a nice start, but... Where does it go from here? 5,000 experience lead for Denial. That's almost level 2 ultimate for the Death Prophet. And with the match, Max Witchcraft, it actually looks like she was at the level 2 ultimate. But now her damage is going to be ridiculous. And so next time if you can black hole those three Brulings and have a level 2 ultimate for, Dex, for Death Prophet on top of it all, there's a good chance that those Brulings die. You know, they, they were pretty close to dying the first time around, so. And it, I think the big thing in that fight was they initiated on to Furion. The swap was there, so Venge died instead of Furion, but the place that Venge was positioned, Venge was over here, and the Furion got hooked here. So yeah. you're swapping oh, yeah. Furion where he has one place to run, into a corner in death. And that's just, <laughs> that's not what you want. Maybe a miss swap there. Hook shot not connecting in the mid lane. The Yoki. positioning of Venge was just not the, not the greatest there. <laughs> she just got... Yeah, that, I I think if you were just a, in a just anywhere over in this vicinity instead of here yeah. and and there, uh, I don't know. It, that's, At least that, get your man an escape route. Yeah, exactly. And then it's just like, sorry, you're in the corner. Art style, right? Fire blast is gonna go. They have the sentry. Ancient seal, Mystic flare. Art style is gonna fall. Great pick from Jarrell as well. You talked about the Mystic flare. It's huge. Well, they will use the reincarnation, and that is level one, by the way. Well, there's the split coming in as well. And they can't even get the kill on that Brewmaster. Cycling up, that'll be on, uh, of course, Creo. It's getting chased down. Taking a lot of damage from Nature Draft. Still okay. Matt comes in. And Ancient Seal, that'll be on the Pandas. And there's no Cyclone. Nicely done there. But here's a big fight coming in. Burrow Strike. There's the Epicenter. It looks like he's got it, but he doesn't use it. Tubox gets a blown up. Hook shot in onto Yoki and Immune. Chasing Immune down now. Looks like he'll fall. Keeping out from Dread Hill, make it away. Immune is not going to be so lucky. Yoki is still in the They just think about the nose actually. Flair's going to go. Yeah, he is absolutely done. Yoki's going to get hit up with the Wraith Fire Blast. He's about to fall as well. And Denial are just, they're winning all of these fights with just superb play. Although Jarrell is now stuck. No, he's not. He's good. Never mind. In top lane, Funzi was getting chased down by Artsal, Dread TP's in, but he, uh, he TP's out. He was using his ult to get pressure on the tier 1. Very nice. Denial all over the map right now. Getting really good trades, getting really good fights, taking the tier 1 tower bottom, tier 1 tower mid's already gone. And then maybe their next focus is up here on the offlane. Usually you see the offlane tower go down first, but they really haven't touched it. And now they're going to head over to Roshan as well. And no medallion it looks like, though. But they can keep creating Eidolons. Exorcism was used for uh, Funzi. And yeah, you were talking about his ult going for the tower. The Funzi now. Aggressive trialing to punish the jungle Enigma. Shut down Wraith King. And Wraith King has still been effective this game because it it works fine as it's like a support hero. That's basically what they force him to be. It's a support hero that's going to be farming later on in the game. Because he, he wasn't able to get farm early on. And he's so, gonna he's got enough gold to go for a Maelstrom, which looks like is gonna be his choice. Mm -hmm. Um he obviously would have bought a blink if he wanted it. Death means no. and oh. next to I'll catch up and farm eventually. Yeah. Uh, he could go for him. Midas like we saw earlier, but I don't think that's the case. I think he's yeah, just gonna pick up a Maelstrom. Already. Yeah, exactly. Um he'll pick up the Maelstrom probably next. Um maybe a blade mail, but I doubt that. That, that's eh. Nah, he would also want that already. Yeah, so should be a maelstrom coming out here just a moment. Weaver sitting on the top of net worth right now. He's got his Lincoln Sphere soon. He just needs the perseverance, which is not too far away. But um, man, that kid's kind of I, I, he he becomes a bit more difficult to kill. They've done a nice job of using the ancient seal to lock him down and make sure he can't time lapse. But with of course the the Lincoln Sphere now it gets that much harder to bring him down. And also using the DP silence. That's true. I forgot about that. At some point when he sees the weaver, 
And they've been bringing sentries to every fight as well. Bunsy's on point is just the, the motto, the mantra of this series right now. Yeah. He's just playing so damn well. It's actually really good. Um, and we'll see if they can take it into the mid to late game and take a victory over Hellraisers and get their first 2 0 in this uh, Dota Pit Season 2 opening day. Flair coming in. There's the time lapse out from the Weaver. He's backing away two minutes in. 6 to, six to 15 the score, is surprisingly enough. So. Dyer's middle tower has been denied. Oh, the deny from Dread. Two denies across the board. One for one side, one for the other. Yoki gets brought low. He gets going out of position. That's a huge pickup too. Brewmaster now down for 39 seconds. Meanwhile, Malify's going in art style. And that kill nets them the, about a 700 gold change. That Brewmaster almost got his ult off. He had an Invisorin, so he felt safe, but Creo on the Skyrath had sentry support. He dodged the hookshot coming out from Sox, or Soxka, and then as he's about to finish his animation for his ultimate, he gets hit with Wraith Fire Blast and Skyrath ult follows that up and he's just dead. Dead. Just it was, dead. It was like a quarter of a second off of living, if that. Unfortunate, but he does go down. And uh, you were right, Gerald yep. does pick up the Maelstrom, so... Yep, top lane, tower goes down to the Death Prophet that was ulting. And well, it, it got denied by Dread, actually. Oh, uh, it did? Okay. Mm -hmm. And mid tower got denied by Mad, so okay. Yep. They traded denied towers. Exactly. But uh, that's it. There's the Weaver getting his Lincoln Sphere. Purchased up now, buys a TP as well. He's set. I mean, this is this is going to help a lot, but is it enough? I mean, he's not building damage yet, obviously, but... Enigma BKB. Oh boy. only Venge swap to cancel it. That's true. If he can't get the Venge, that could be a problem, but... Eh, seven hundred range swap at rank 1. He's got to be really careful with his positioning so he doesn't get silenced while going for the swap. Yes, that's true. That, that's, I think, your the priority for Creo. getting the rank 2 swap, so you have that range. But, well, the Roman they did early, he's only level 8 at 20 minutes. Sand King's doing a bit better. He's uh, level 9. He's got his Blink Dagger. You really want to get that rank 2 ultimate for Sand King, though. Yeah, that's that, that's huge. That's huge. Damage. Yeah, it absolutely is. But he's still kind of far away from it. Although 9 to 10 and 10 to 11 aren't the most, you know, experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 12. We get a. Yeah, that's the. You get 2200 experience. <laughs> that's actually the most ridiculous thing in the world when you're playing a pub. You're just like, I can't get past level 11. Damn it. It's so frustrating sometimes, but. Well, for now we just worry about getting to level 11. As they exorcism, they throw some Eidolons up, they have a really nice alpha here, but there's a smoke coming out from Hellraisers. This could be a big fight. Yoki gets silenced immediately, and they might try to bring him down. Burst right coming in. Yoki, another silence! Beautifully done from Funzi as well as the Skyrath. And now Matt is on a mission. He wants to get maybe somebody with a black hole, but he got the swarm on him at the last second. Beautifully done though from Denial in that situation. How did he get that yeah, ancient seal off? I don't even uh, I don't even know how he got the ancient seal off. That was he's impressive from Creo. He's sitting there with a pre-clicked, and yes. at that point you just guess at who he's going to go on. You hit your ancient seal hockey, and then you just spam left click, or you're spamming that hockey with quick cast on, mm -hmm. uh, with, and your mouse cursor over where you think he's going to blink. One of the two. That's just so you can instant silence the hero. And if you are the brewmaster in this case, if you don't have a BKB, you better be blink ulting. Yeah, you can't blink clap can't in this go situation. For the, the clap ult. It's it's just too much. It's too long. You'll never get that ult off if that's the case. And and I think that Hellraisers know this now. Yoki definitely knows this. And, he, and the thing is, even if you do blink ult, there's no 100 percent chance that you're gonna get it off. This is the, the right couple of pixels on the screen. You're getting silenced. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then that fight <laughs> turns pretty sour. And also the fact that the silence that came up from Funzy afterwards was just even more impressive to me. So. Oak shot in, they're gonna try to take him down. There's the Ancient Seal, Mystic Flare, Yoki again going down. Great pick coming out for Denial again. Now the, the BKBs are starting to pile up here for Denial. For Hellraisers, they're nowhere close, really. Uh, I mean, obviously, you had to get the blink for Yoki. He's trying to go for an Aghanim Scepter, and I think he should have just... He should have went BKB first in that situation. You, you don't need to get the Ags early on. You just need to be able to get your ultimates off, but... I don't know, it just feels like Hellraisers are pulling pretty far behind now. As you can see, the 7,500 net worth lead for Denial at this point. And Weaver, despite having Lincolns, he's got... Eh. 
He's working towards the Deso. He needs to get that Deso so we can actually do some damage, but even then, it's going to be a really hard team fight for him to get into. Against, He has to worry about Black Hole, he has to worry about Death Prophet's ult doing a lot of damage to him. It's a hard game to be a bug. It's very hard. Dred's got Necro 3 gold right now if he wants to buy it, or he can save for buyback. Well, that actually... And uh, Dread is keeping his treants split up and around him, that way it's a lot harder for him to get hit by a clockwork hook. Yeah, that's actually just a really nice play. You don't need the treants to be able to jungle either at this point in time, so... And anyway, now he sees the clockwork, so he just jungles with them. Yep. Making sure he's safe. Well, Clockwork is uh, going right down mid lane. He's getting close to an Aghanim, so he's actually just 1,000 gold away from getting it, which is going to be a really nice pickup for them. Our style... picked up on Sand King. Oh, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now now it's their time to fight. This could be Denial walking into a trap, essentially, with this level 2 ult coming off, but it really comes down to him hitting that epicenter. They will pop the exorcism. They're looking for the tier 2 tower. Yeah, and the Four silence stuns. is... That's, that's a big... It's a big thing here. It's all about the initiation. Dyer's bottom tower is under okay. attack. Where, where is that, that that Sand King? There he is, in the trees over here. He's ready to go, we're gonna keep our eye. He's channeling it up, he's ready to go. He's about to blink in, bro, Epi. They blow up the Death Prophet, mad in trouble now, taking some damage. BKB, Black Hole going, Art Style. They wanna get this kill on him, but he will not get it. Time lapse going through, but they do blow up the Sand King. They're all coming in. They throw the Wraith Fire Blast as well, but they don't get it, they get out of range of the Sentry Ward on the low ground. Brew split still going through. Three for two trade, and this is a great fight going for Hellraisers right now. Draw's trying to TP out of there. It looks like he will make it. And they actually lost Mad at the end of that as well. They were not expecting the level two ultimate. It blew up Funzy, and boy, it did some work that fight. Mad's CP was about a half second too late, and he died like a tenth of a second before he was gonna get out. He must have hit the wrong keybind or something, resulting in his death. But that was, like I said, all about the initiation. Hellraiser's got amazing initiation out of their Sand King, and Brewmaster got his ult off. So they crushed that fight. Yeah, that, that's actually huge. That, that fight going the way of Hellraiser's. They've also got the Necro Book 3 up for the Wraith King, which makes his life a bit more difficult. Yeah, that, that actually, he can't... He was able to get Reliably. his ult off that time because the book wasn't on him. Yeah, but that, you time, can't but, Yeah, you have to be really careful on Wraith King whenever there's a book in the field. He's, he's just gonna get focused down by the, the mana burn, the Necro Archer, so... We'll have to see if uh, that really throws a wrench into draw. Who, by the way, again, this is uh, supposed to be a core Wraith King. You're sitting below half in terms of the net worth chart now. He's got a blink and he's got a Maelstrom, and that's great, but... Level 3 ultimate... This is going to be huge, and just another item, any real item would be super I'll beneficial for him at this point. And there's no real mobility item coming up for the Scarf Mage, he just has two Null Talismans and an Arcane. And all of a sudden on, on your supports here, Immune is still sitting on treads, yes, but Dubas with the Blink Dagger is really starting to become a force here. He's almost past level 11 into level 12, and uh, getting to a level 3 ultimate would be even bigger. But because that's that, still ways away. Because of that team fight, Immune's got rank 2 swap now, which is a lot better against an Enigma. Like the rank 1, you can just get disabled some way by their silencer or stun. But rank 2, you have that extra 250 range to get the swap off while he's holding. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, this game's starting to get a bit closer for Hellraisers. And actually bring it back about, uh,. From 7,500 to 5,000 in net worth deficit. Denial's still in the lead, but not by as much. Death Slater, however, has found it's, it's found its way onto the Weaver, so... That's a huge item. That's that's some right-click right there. Yeah. Another important item that you always see against Clockwork, but isn't actually in this game yet, is Force Staff. Mm -hmm. I wonder if yeah. the Sand King's gonna be the one to make one, because Dread's working on a sheep stick right now. Yeah, it, ha it has to be the Sand King, because there's no yeah. way of use getting that farm. I'm really surprised that Yoki decided to go for Aghanims this game with BKB. I saw the point booster and then I thought, okay, he's died twice now where he could have lived with the BKB. Maybe he'll just get a BKB. Nope, he really wants the Aghanims to buff up his ultimate. Yeah, he will be tanker to be, fi tankier to be fair, so he might be able to survive through those two silences. Yeah, if he gets Scarrath Mage ulted and yeah, he'll just, he's yeah, he'll not die. surviving. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, this is all theoretical, so. Yeah, it's true. At the same time, though, I mean, I agree with you. I think BKB is probably the better option. Hook shot onto Artstyle, but he's got an Agnes Setter, so. <laughs> that, that was okay. anticlimactic. Yeah, he's just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him know I'm here. <laughs> just, just say hi. But if there just was a rush attempt that was going on by Denial, it was yeah. kind there of like go. a half assed rush attempt. And it got scouted by Trance and Bugs, and now they're going back in again. This time they're committing to it using the DP ultimate. Yeah, Exorcism gets popped. Which, it's only ranked 2 DP ultimate. He's going to be level 3, but now Arcel's coming in, and you can see he's trying to do work here. He's giving it silence as well. Swap on, of course. Oh, the Exorcism blowing up Art Style. He can't get his ult off. Unbelievable. And now Mune's going to get focused down as well. The Wraith King ultimate does come out. Yoki blinks away. Time to finish Rose, boys. Oh. And meanwhile, Sand King was up in the dire jungle. He's looking for a pickoff on mid, but his blink's on cooldown currently. And so, Denal, they maybe don't know this is coming. Oh, shut. No, it's going to go in. That'll be on Yoki. Can they get it off? Absolutely. They were looking for the black hole. They couldn't do so. There's the epicenter going through. Burrow Strike connects onto two. Look at the damage the mech went. BKB, black hole onto everybody. Now, Dubas getting caught in it. Will they bring him down? They cannot. Their own charge is going to go, however. It won't kill him. Paris is going to get up with the boulder toss. Cycling up in the air. Black hole now, John. Oh, Funzi gets it with the Crypt Storm at the last second to get the kill. Unbelievable. Yoki now going to get out as well, but he pops the regen rune first, and he will make it away. But it's still a huge fight, and Roche going for denial. However, Black Hole is now on cooldown, and so is Reincarnation for 96 seconds. Exorcism on cooldown for 50, and they're pushing into this, by the way. Now it's low enough, so. No, that, that's, that's it. 40 seconds. Surprisingly, yeah. DP didn't get a drum this game. You see drum a lot of the time on DP because when you have phase drum yules, when you activate phase you're at 521 move speed, where 522 is haste rune status. But he chose to not get one this game. He wanted to get that BKB up as soon as possible. Which makes sense. Mm -hmm. With me. And I've now he's working seen, on a Shiva's. I've seen a lot of Death Prophets go for just phase into Yule Scepter. And less and less of the drum as time has moved on. That, that's not to say I don't see it at all. I, I see it enough, so I think for Funzi he just wants to be able to stay alive in these fights with his BKB. He's got the Sheba's Guard now coming out. There's the Aghanim Scepter done for the Brewmaster for Yoki. And Dubas has got his four staff, so that's what you're talking about against the clock. That's really important. And it's up. Our cell's stuck. Uh oh. He doesn't have his ult up or TP scroll. Yeah, oh, he gets swapped him. out. Yeah. And that breaks the trees, so Mew can walk out now. That was some interesting cogs. He got pushed like halfway up a cliff oh. and then down so it didn't break the trees. Clockwork hookshot, not level 3. The range wasn't there for that last hookshot. He's very close to his level 3. Speaking of which, they have level 3 ultimate coming out for Funzi now. And they, they can take fights at this point in time with the level 3 ultimate. So difficult to fight into. Art and style, have... silence. Lincoln Sphere was broken by Malphite, but they can't use him, or can they? It was on cooldown. It was cooldown. They have rank 3 ult on the Wraith King as well. Oh, Epicenter going. Paris still alive, does get the hook shot off on Dubas. There's the silence going through. Now the Exorcism. This could be a poor fight. Dubas should fall here. It looks like he will. Dread going, and he gets a kill on the Clockwork finally, but Dread's going to try to TP away, but there's the Yule Scepter. That's that's too aggressive, Dread. My friend, you are going to fall. Double kill for Funzi. Nicely done. And they're chasing right after Yoki, it looks like. But he's going to make it away. Three for one in the Aegis. That's, that's probably worth it. That's definitely worth it. No, They're the Aegis, it was, really, it was, Sorry, the, it was the reincarnation. Aegis. Yeah. His, his fake it's Aegis. Rank three. So it's 60 seconds, so he still has Aegis to work with. Now, I'm surprised well, that they gave the Aegis to Wraith King. Yeah. They could have given it to uh, the it's Death Prophet, like, maybe, or... If, if, if you're trying to push base with this Aegis, you're not going to be able to have a Wraith King just sit there and do considerable amounts of the tower with his items. He kind of tickles buildings. <laughs> he really does. Although, I guess DP, you've got enough defensive items that you don't really feel like you need it on him. Well, he went for Shiva's. Maybe he's going to go for the uh, Heart next or Bloodstone. I, I, I think either of those items yeah. are going to keep him alive a lot longer, so he's got to he's got to get those items up next and quickly. Probably Heart and then Refresher. 
So for Hellraisers, I mean, this Aggrim Scepter for Yoki could be big. Uh, I think we've seen it once already, but he's still only level 2 in the ultimate. Hellraisers, Heart Style, Ancient Seal, Mystic Flare, they're gonna grab another kill! Nicely done, again, on the Weaver going down. Good, good four staff from Sakshika to break the Lincolns. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Big push coming in, keep the in. Link, Jeral going in, there's the hookshot, doesn't connect, but they do get two in the cogs, and that's including the Brueling, but they do lose the Wraith King. Force out from Paris, there's the Shiva's Guard, Dread, trying to sprout up QSDF Bunzi. He does get it off, but there's the Wraith Fire Blast, Dread getting chased down. The stun from the Boulder Toss, Hookshot, and I think it missed. I'm not sure who it went on on the backside here. Looks like they're going for Vibas, and they will grab that kill with the Ancient Seal. Yoki gets out. Triple kill now, coming out from Frio. Four dead. You know, during all of that, Enigma, who has book three, did not have a TP scroll. He just pushed down the bottom tier two tower. <laughs> And he gets the tier one mid, I believe. Unless that, to bet, that might, that might end up. Wait, hold on. Two, tier two mid died a while ago. Yeah, right well, after they got, right after a fight. Well, so the tier two down bottom goes, and uh... I'm surprised there's a necro three on the new one. Well, it's good. You can be able to push in. Yeah. You might go for a pressure next if he really does want to get a blank. Blip is gonna maybe have to be used here, in fact it will. And everyone's back up in about 25 seconds. No split though for the Brewmaster, that's the important thing. Weaver can still pump up damage here, but... They're gonna lose a set of racks it looks like, at the very least. Maybe not. Yoki jumps in. Draw still has his... well, reincarnation, that's it. He's gonna get forced in and slow them down even further. They really want this, but here comes Mad. He has hold, by the way, he's gonna use it. He's on immune only, but it will get the kill. He's done. Ancient Seal, that'll be on Zubus right now. He was actually channeling his epicenter, and he got silenced before he could get it off. Hookshot in. Zubus is about to fall. Paris taking a lot of damage. Zubus with the urn. He will go down. Meanwhile, Miona from Draw doing work. Everyone is dying for Hellraisers right now. This might be it. They lose the set of racks. Dread's getting Malificed here. Still taking a lot of damage from the Necro Warrior. There's going to be the Old Scepter up in the air. Mech's going to fly. Crypt Swarm as well. Dread silenced up Shiva's Guard. And it's a team wipe. Hellraisers lose all five. And GG is called Denial with a fantastic game. Fantastic series. Take it 2-0 up against Hellraisers who played a pretty solid game in their own way. They did. They, they went with Ball's Head Aggression this game and it was doing okay for them. They just... They had one really bad team fight when they were getting pushed on the tier 2 top, and they brought it back a little bit with their really good team fight on their tier 2 mid, but DP is too strong, they couldn't really...